Today I was thinking about doing a little segment about some ideas with lazy horses. Let's, let's start off here. So if you're riding a lazy horse, I think one of the most important things is to be disciplined as a rider in order to support the horses so that they understand what their role is, what their needs are. Um, and sometimes what's difficult in riding lazy horses is we do the wrong thing in the training based on the feeling that we get that actually perpetuates the problem. So let me explain that. So with a lazy horse, we know that we have to get them more forward, more in front of us. And what happens often is we end up chasing them forward. Um, and in chasing them forward, they understand the pressure or the work to be in front of them and the relief, the rest, to be behind them. And so the more we chase them, the worse they get in a way. And it kind of, turns this whole problem that we are never able to get above. We're never able to get our horses truly in front of us. For me, I, I think that lazy horses can be high performance horses if we're able to ride them the right way and educate them the right way. Um, people are often talking about high performance being the only for the super, super hot horse. And for me, I think there's a way that you can take a lazy horse, or if you have a lazy horse, if you educate it right and you do the training in the right way, you can improve it a lot. And it depends on the horse, but oftentimes you can reach the upper levels of dressage. So the hot horses have problems of their own, lazy horses have problems of their own. So it's all in figuring out the best way to ride them. So let's go back to this concept of like, how do we get our horses more in front of us? And there's, there's a lot to this. Like it's not so easy just in one video to articulate these things or even verbally to articulate these things. So much of dressage is feel-based and dependent on your horse, um, which I can't see right now. <laughs> um, but here are some ideas. So. A, you need reaction. So you need to school the feeling. Always in the training, I think it's really important that you school the feeling. If you have a bad feeling in the training, do a little bit more until you get a better reaction and then teach the horses, educate the horses to respond to smaller and smaller cues. Now, back to what I said at the beginning, if that means that we're just running forward all the time, we don't get our horses back on the hind leg and then they wanna escape by coming behind us more and more. And so for me, one of the most important transitions in the training of the lazy horse is to be, see if I can get it on the hind leg. Um, so instead of thinking I'm gonna get this horse in front of the leg, see if you can get this horse back on the hind leg and teach the horse that there's actually more work behind you and relief in front of you. Um, so think organize a straightness. And yes, if you come at the leg, they need to go forward. But if you can teach them to come back on the hind leg, either collect in the canter, collect in the trot, that can help you a ton. I do a lot of work in hand with the Piaf Passage. Um, but with the lazier horses, I feel that it's really beneficial to have a half step. Um, and so if I can quicken the horse where they, they find a trot rhythm that's more uh, closer to on the spot, I can use that in a way to get them quicker and to get them more in front of me. And so if I if I feel like I have a half step, I will go there. I will try to work on it. I'll try to work on it in hand and then use that to where when I come with my aids, I can get a quicker response and a more forward response. 
those two things are really important. And then, yeah, I mean, in the, in the whole umbrella of everything, we just go to educate the horse. So think of educating the travers that you can position the haunches in, uh, you can bend them around your leg, uh, that you can ride shoulder four, um, that you can bring them back on the hind legs as you're riding shoulder four. This is a big one. So in the arena, if you're riding shoulder four or shoulder in down the long side, um, you can kind of isolate in that scenario and try to, to bring them back onto the hind legs in the connection, but you're isolating that you say to the horse, you need to be in front of my left leg. Um, so if you're going down the long side uh, around to the left, I'm gonna half halt them, I'm gonna bring them back on the hind legs, and if they try to escape me or push back against me, I'm gonna really teach them and educate them to be in front of the inside leg. Um, my inside leg directs and tells the horse to get their inside hind leg underneath their body. If they can get that underneath their body as I bring them back and compress them and they're committed to staying under me, in front of me, from that inside leg, then I can get them in front of me. Um, there's some great examples of top riders doing this, uh, riding really good corners uh, and also riding shoulder in that I find really beneficial. Let's see, other, other tips with lazy horses. Oftentimes we think in our brain about lazy horses and even as I've talked today about the response to the leg, but oftentimes a lazy horse the problem is also showing up equally in the connection, okay? So if we can get our horses properly connected, we can get them in front of us. Um, so think about that. Can I work on my connection, be able to put the horse back on the hind leg, that the energy is circulating and coming through, and then they get more in front of you from that place. That's a really, really important piece. So. Instead of just giving the reins and chasing them forward, giving the reins and chasing them forward, how do we get them properly connected, engaged, and then in front of us? For me, one of the biggest things is like educating the horse to come on the hind leg in the canter. Um, so I, I, in my exercises, I'll do a lot of like travers down the long side or haunches in down the long side, and then straightening, maybe shoulder four down the long side travers down the long side, and then collect them, bring them back, put them on the hind leg, work towards like a schooling pirouette. And using the bend in those exercises, I can get them more in front of me. Now, I'm also gonna do that in a way that I'm not forcing it to happen. So I need to educate the lazy horse to understand what his role is. I, it's not my job to help him keep cantering. It's my job to sit there and direct him. And if he breaks out of canter, then I can come with the aids, use my leg, um, get after him a little bit until he canters. So that's really important. Don't try to save it too soon or ride it to be perfect today. In the canter especially, teach the horse. If I collect you, if I bring you back, it's your job to keep cantering. And that piece of bring them back, bring them back, bring them back, see if you can find the opportunity where they'll quit, and then use that opportunity as an educational opportunity that you say, hey, you need to keep going, you need to keep going, then you can go back to canter, um, but use that moment where they break out of the canter to get them more in front of you and more committed to staying in front of you. Um, but go back a few times, repeat it to where you can collect the canter and they say, I'm committed to staying up in front of you because I know the repercussions if I, if I do break. And I understand, the horse understands the concept of where the pressure is and where the pressure isn't and what their job is, what their role is. So for me, that's really important. If I can get a horse cantering back on the hind leg, organized, and I can sit there quietly and have them keep jumping in front of me, that's gonna help in the long term. But yeah, it's that same concept, whether it's in the trot or the canter, getting them in front of me. 
It's funny because some of my favorite horses that I've ever had have been on the lazier side of things. So it's it's actually really peaceful here. All the horses are kind of sleeping. Disney. Oh, Disney. Disney's going really good. Um, all of these videos are provided to you from uh, exclusive dressage imports and all the horses that I get to ride here. So if you're interested in looking for a new horse or you want to check that out, you can always go to the website. Um, this one is Encanto. He's a three-year-old. Emilio Sanchez. We really have a, a very good lineup of horses now. So um, this is Indy. Look at her. She's curious about the camera. You curious, Indy? Anyway, check out the website, check out the sales horses, and uh, keep after those horses. This is Escanello. Hi, buddy. They're all very happy and very calm this, this time of day in the evenings. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Subscribe, hit that little bell. That means you get notifications when I post videos, so. Thank you.